Great. Welcome. Welcome to our talk. Um, yeah, let's get it started. Um, short introduction. We're Torsten and Dennis. Obviously, we're doing things in search and Java and ops and stuff. And uh, we're a freelancer. And um, today we're going to talk about a project that we recently almost finished. Um, but it's going to be very interesting in the e-commerce space. So, um, everything we talk about is, is somehow rooted in an AWS cost reduction project. I'm not going to talk about any AWS cost reduction right now and right here, in the break or during a beer, perfect. Um, we did a lot of, um, we're driving in the, in the project where we, where we, that we joined, we were driving a large solar e-commerce cluster. So um, we went ahead on, on reducing costs, and during that we fixed a lot of issues in solar, we pull requested them, we fixed some internal bugs, um, but the details are, we can discuss on GitHub. One thing that came across our mind was um, we were able to, to raise the node utilization on the CPU level um, from 25 to 50%. So this is, this is the average uh, 24 hour node utilization of our solar cluster. All nodes do the same, they're pretty alike, so the, the utilization is pretty, pretty even. So, um, raising that saved a lot of money, um, but raising from 25% utilization to 50% means that your headroom shrinks. So, we had, um, we had outages, a lot of outages, um, where we just ran out of headroom, even though we had auto-scaling in place, but um, we just saw queries coming in that just spiked through the headroom, way beyond 100%. The cluster stalled, crumbled, lots of fun, lots of, um, lots of screaming. Um, so, let's start with some easy math. So we have, at average, 12 instances running, 32 cores, leaves you with 192 CPU headroom, if you just take the 50% on average. Um, now, if you have uh, a request coming in, spending four shards, and the request takes you four seconds, you are able to fulfill about 12 requests per second. That's not that much, just on the headroom. So we thought it would be great to stay on this 50% um, utilization on average by just reducing the time that we need for the request to just have a sort of capped amount of time or some budget for the request that we wanted to set and to say, okay, we want the request to have 400 milliseconds at max because that means on four shards um, we were able to uh, fulfill 120 requests per second. So if we have any spikes in, in, um, in requests, we were easily able to handle this. So. The goal was somehow look at the application, look at the search, look at the searches that were coming, and be ab somehow able to reduce or to cap all requests or all searches that we had on the e-commerce system um, at a certain amount of time, around 400, 500 milliseconds. And in the end, this saves a shitload of money and um, everybody's happy. So that was the, the basic idea for the project. So, stakeholders involved, it's just easy. Just whatever you do, just leave the best document, the best products on top, whatever you do. Just that, that's, that was the first comment. The other one was, um, yeah, well, nobody browses beyond page 10, just cut off. The other one was, okay, you can cut off anything you want above in, in your document list, but the facets need to represent the whole result, not just any top result. Um, so, and the other one was, yeah, okay, well, just the top results. I don't care about the facets. I just care about the response time. So, a lot of ideas, a lot of advice, and uh, we came up with a very, very rough implementation idea. The basic problem was retrieval and first phase ranking basically ate CPU for lunch. Um, that was the problem. Um, I mean, if you're driving a solar cluster, it's, uh, it needs CPU, and it needs RAM, and it needs IOPS, all at the same time, at a huge amount, and there's always pressure on that. So, um, the problem is, if we, we saw that we, if we had results exceeding a certain amount of documents, like 60K, 100K uh, result sizes, they were just, um, 
they were just uh, exceeding the cache size and everything just goes very slow on the nodes. In, especially if you have a sharded uh, environment, you don't really know what, what shard is utilized by how much. I mean, the, the AWS uh, load balancer can easily uh, distribute um, evenly, but um, the solar distribution, the internal distribution is kind of, well, we had to look into that a couple of times to make sure that it's evenly distributed. So the implementation idea basically was, okay, if we know that 60K, the 60K result size is about the sweet spot that we want to serve that would end up with those 400 milliseconds, then why don't just select those top 60K documents, return them, somehow do our first phase ranking, which is a very, very long function query in solar, and um, then um, uh, take everything to a re-ranker outside of solar. That's basically that's done by another team. So that was the, the very rough idea. And um, so we came up with a plan. A plan is always good, something you can break, but um, we try to stick to that, and that's basically the contents that we're gonna, going to cover. So the basic idea is we take any incoming query. We wanted a generic approach. We take any incoming query and just execute it on a part of the index to be able to see is it a query that will return like 100,000 documents or two documents or five million documents. The index size is roughly about 20 million documents. So um, we wanted just to see what kind of query do we have. And we basically have no idea. If you have a query for sale or for genes, um, that could be something that is very excessive. Uh, something like Nintendo Switch is a smaller query. Um, then we wanted to, to see if we somehow can, can select those 60K top documents. And the problem is that you don't want to retrieve the full, um, the full result and then do some, some uh, capping on that. You want to do a filter query on the top results. And you needed some, some idea of an index ranking criteria to, um, to pinpoint those top documents. Um, then we wanted to retrieve those um, based on that, that ranking criteria, do our first phase sorting, so we have a perfectly sort, sorted top list, then just do some e extrapolating. So I have a certain amount of documents, and now I want to extrapolate to the real result size to give the customer an idea what is the rough result size of your t-shirt search. So yes, it's 1.9 million t-shirts, so go ahead and browse. And then we want to somehow handle the facet facets to, to have them um, represent the whole result set and not just a top result set or a sampled result set. And um, let's start with a plan. And the first thing was we need to get an idea on how to sam properly sample a query. And that's where Dennis comes in. Hi. So the main the first issue was how, how can we get uh, a proper sample from um, our selection. Um, if you think of a query like uh, sale or star or some big query like uh, a couple of million documents and you want to get an information what, what, um, what are my um, index base sort values distributed across this, this query. Remember those um, index uh, sort-based criteria, which we, um, which Torsten talk, talked about, um, to, to get a rough estimation what those values are distributed across your, your query. You need to take um, a sample to get information about it. So first, year, first idea was, okay, let's take our selection and only view part of it to get a rough estimation about the distribution of those values. Um, so if you know uh, Solar or Lucene, any Lucene-based uh, product, um, those documents are organized in a form of a doc set, which is basically a, a bit set or a roaring bit set, if you take it specifically. And those bit sets are really fast. So if you you can put 100,000 uh, doc IDs in, the, in this um, um, structure, and you can easily ask this, okay, what's the overlap between another doc set? Give me the intersection. Give me 
uh, basically sort of set informations. Um, those are really, really fast. Um, but on the downside, you cannot iterate that easily over those, over those doc sets. So when you want to pick a sample, you need to iterate over every single doc ID and just skip once. So you basically get an iterator back. Um, so yeah, well, we thought, OK, let's give it a try. And we implemented it, and it worked. But um, after about 200 or 300k documents, it collapsed. So it was too slow. And it also seemed a little bit awkward to um, let Solar build up this huge selection just in order to get samples out of it. So why, do we <coughs> why don't we sample uh, up front so that we can spare those uh, lot of memory and computation time? So we needed an idea how to sample in a different way. So we tried to invert the problem, not build the selection up front and try to pick up a sample, but instead sample every document, every document that's in the index. So what we came up with is choosing a random number which within certain boundaries, such as your um, index get, get sliced or bucketized into buckets of around 100k documents. Um, those might be 200 or 400 buckets. You, you have to choose how big is your index and what, what kind of bucketing you, 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 you wish. And then you can, at index time, create a random number and add it to your document. And what this does is it gives you the ability to create a random experiment. Um, when you think you can, you, you can fire up a query against a document which you randomly pick, then what you gain is a probability which you can observe, which determines if this document is part of the selection or not. So what you've created just is um, an arbitrary random experiment, which has nothing to do with search. Mm -hmm. It just creates a random experiment. It's, it's basically not different than throwing a dice or tossing a coin. And this gives you the power to use all the maths that are known for hundreds of years. So you get a, basically a binomial distribution and therefore a standard distribution. Um, and you can use all those equations which you already know. So here's our plan how to find the right sample size. Because um, you need to know how much samples do you need to look at. If you think you enter a query like uh, trousers size 40 in blue and um, in short, um, you get maybe 100 documents. So your P is very low. So you need to look at a huge number of documents. Um, if you search for something like book, maybe you get 4 million, 5 million. So your P gets much higher. So you need to look at a smaller sample size. So in order to determine that, we fire up a first shot at the solar cluster. And only on the local shard, and only in one bucket, just to get a rough estimation what we are dealing with. And we call this P star. This is the observed probability, which we take, took a look at. And we can then define what is, for us, an acceptable error on this probability. Let's say we have a selection with 100 documents. Then for us, it would be desirable to have this number um, around 10% of error rate. Like if it's 90 or 110, it doesn't matter. And for a huge result, it's also fine. If it's 100,000 or 110, it doesn't matter. So we said, OK, an error rate of 10% is OK for us. And then we can use an equation to 
um, solve for our sample size, which is yeah, no, known for years. It basically says, okay, you have a standard normal distribution, you know the Z, Z table, the Z table, um, you can look up your confidence interval, you can take, okay, I take the 95% interval, um, um, I use my observed P star, multiply it, divide it by the error um, squared, and because we know the size, we can even lower this number and optimize for this. And then what we get out of it is the number of documents which I need to look at to be sure that my observed probability of this query is that is the correct one. And I'm certain to, I don't know, 95%, I think. And then I could use my index-based renting criteria and could find a correct distribution and could then filter my query. Yes, that's the basic idea. So we now know how many documents do we need to look at to get an ex in, within an acceptable error to find the distribution of values for any given index-based criteria. This could be whatever you want. This totally depends on your implementation. Let it be a sales rank, a rating average, a recency, whatever you call popularity. Um, in our case, this is highly obfuscated, and we just call it indexed sort score. So this is, totally depends on your, on your implementation. But the idea now is, and that was, the, that was the tricky part, we want to retrieve 60K documents. And we have this indexed sort criteria. That's it. That is basically part of the first phase ranking. That is not fully the first phase ranking, but it's the major, the major component of our first phase ranking. So we, can, we are able to take this out of the first phase ranking. And we can now, what we want now is that we want to filter the whole result for the top documents um, given this index sort score. And what we don't know is the filter values. We know that we want the top values in terms of solar, that's the star, but we don't know where to start to match 60k documents. So that's where, we, that's where the sample size comes in. Now what we now want to do is we take a look at the sample size, we retrieve the value distribution of the index sort score to basically know our QN and then filter the, the result. So what we did is, uh, now we're back in solar, now I'm in home country. Um, is it working? Is it, is, it's working. So what we basically do is, um, we have three solar components that we build in this. We have a estimate, so-called estimated hit count component that does exactly that, what uh, Dennis said. You fire a query on the local shard, and which is not uh, and just a single bucket on the local shard, which is given four shards uh, times and 128, uh, 182, 128 buckets. Uh, this is uh, a very small part of the index. And we just check out the result side on this very small part of the index. And we take this, uh, in this case, it said, okay, this query will give you six million documents. And we take this as uh, the input to our equation. And um, what we're then able to do is, okay, um, we, can, uh, we, can, um, we can then uh, just do the math and say, okay, we just need to look at one bucket on all shards equally distributed. So what we do before issuing the query to Solar and start the query parsing process, we do a query to all the shards and we limit the query to just a single, a single bucket. So this is just a very small portion of the query, and the query duration is about, in this case, was 50 milliseconds um, that uh, everything returned. And what we then do is, on the shards, we look at the field index sort score and collect all the values um, in, that in that bucket and just um, add up to quantize so that we have... Um, 
the value quantized down here. Uh, they start from zero and go to, I think, 35, and we have a maximum of 45. So the 95p percentile is 35.1. And uh, I think the this is the 90, the 90 percentile is 19. What we then can do is we know how big the um, we get back an, uh, a better approximation of the, of the MST, uh, uh, estimated uh, search result size because we did it on the charts. We have now, it's not, that, that not just that we took a look in the very small um, bucket, now we t took a look in a, at buckets where we can uh, ensure an error of 10%. We know the real estimated uh, result size, which is uh, 6.1 million documents. And now can we, that we... Uh, now, do we know that um, in order to reach those 60k documents in the return value or in the return result, we need to uh, just select um, the top 10% documents. And what we then do is that we basically filter the whole result um, to an index sort score, take the 90% um, quantile, put it in the filter value, because that's what we, that was, was uh, the thing that we, were, we were looking for. And um, we are ready to go. Then Solar can do its magic and do the, the whole query thing. And we just get the top 60K documents. And basically outside, nobody notices. So if we, took, uh, if we take a look at the, the whole thing, there are more, more to this. Um, we estimate the hit count in the first, very first rough request on the local shard. We collect the quantize in a shard request, limited to a single bucket. We, um, for the response of this, we know it has an um, estimated error of 10%, which is good enough. What we then do is apply the filter to the current query, because we're still on the coordinator node. We can, we can still modify the query, and now is the, play, now is the time where Solar does his magic, do, does the whole filter par query parsing, response selection, and uh, retrieval. And the last thing that we need to do on the, um, on the coordinator is basically extrapolate the result back to what it would roughly be. In this case, I think we said it would be 2.4 million because, or 2.0 million because we do some collapsing, which is another headache, but that's another story. So that's basically idea, the idea for document retrieval. What we learned from implementing a lot of solar components was um, you need to separate solar components from business code. The solar search component interface is horrible, and you just want the, 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 just the solar magic in, this, um, in the search component. You want your business code in completely different classes uh, that basically are testable and does um, do not contain any solar code. You want to separate solar components from marshalling. The only thing needed to say here is named list. This should be somewhere else. We uh, build very small components, thus they are very reusable. This estimated hit count component comes in play later when it comes to facets. Um, most components are coordinator only, which makes it very easy to build. And for quantile computation, we could use the t library, which is great. Zero overhead, zero, um, zero heap that we use for that. And for cardinality computation, we could use the hyperloglog -log plus plus, which is also contained in solar. That was great. Um, originally, we started with the, with the idea of not building any more solar components. Um, so we built, I think, five or seven. Um, but we promised that we will package them as plugins soon. Um, but let's take a look at the results. So, what did we do? This is basically for the query sale, without any facets, just document retrieval. This is the basic response time. Um, I think this is a couple of days, and this is the, basically the deployment time, um, where we drop from about 1.2 seconds to, um, I think, roughly 450 milliseconds in total, which is great, because um, the return, the, the Documents to retrieve, to sort, and to rank were reduced from, I think, 4 million or 5 million documents down to um, those 60K documents. So the next thing is, was, were the components that we built, were they any effective? So 
This is uh, a typical day, 24 hours, and these are basically how much are the, uh, what's the percentage of results that were filtered running through, uh, running through solar. And there we see, and this is a common usage pattern um, at the company that we built, um, the solar is um, behind some product API, and there are some teams doing some crazy stuff with it. So we had, uh, at peak, um, about 12% um, of um, queries filtered in any, in any case. The usual distribution is down below to 3%. The thing is, those 3% of queries, they hurt us so much to, um, to make us go this whole way and do this effort, um, because they're really huge. Because if we take a look at the distribution, by how much are those results reduced in size, we have about 80% reduction. And here are some updates, and we have some, some shuffling, but we're still about 50 to 60% size reduction for the, for the queries that are incoming. So um, this saves a lot of CPU and a lot of heap, um, and saves basically much, much money. And now to something completely different. Facets. So the same approach couldn't be applied to facets. Um, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, when you imagine you enter some keyword in, in an e-commerce shop like book, you usually want to see like authors, distributors, some kind of facets um, on your navigation. Um, and you typically do not want those to be limited to some kind of top products. So, so what you usually want, you want to browse in, you want to limit your, your result size by selecting, um, uh, if you enter something like shoes, you want to limit it by size, by maybe form, or anything you can imagine. So facets should be applied to the overall set. So. Uh, it needs a, a different approach. Um, what we did was a simple sampling approach. So we said, okay, let's, let's just not visit all the products. So let's just visit a small portion of it, but usually enough to be somewhat confident that it's okay. Um, and it worked. Um, but then came the stakeholders and said, oh, when I enter uh, books, m my, my company isn't there in the brands. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, that's okay. And then the other stakeholder came along and said, okay, but when I enter trousers, my label is not listed. You say, okay, when you enter trousers, you get three million results. Why do you expect? Okay, but uh, they expect those, and um, it's reasonable. Um, so those need to be included. And what we did um, is we added those to our sampling selection. So what we did is, you can say kind of a hack, um, but it works, and it works great. So what we do is we still do the sampling, but we include the top products which we can still select and see our distribution among this query, um, but we can add those to the set. And then the faceting is much better, and it also includes all the products which are important to various customers, stakeholders, and, uh, and so on. Um, we are also trying uh, a second approach beside this uh, simple um, mechanism which is a bit more sophisticated and tries to predict values inside facets so we can um, also build up a confidence interval and use a little bit a, a better approach to this problem um, but um, yeah it's not easy and it's still ongoing yeah that's a more sophisticated approach um, yeah we did it, and we made things a lot faster. But what's more important is not that it gets faster. It's more important that the CPU is not that stressed 
by a small amount of huge queries. If you imagine you get a few thousand, 5,000 queries per second, and only 50 are huge queries, and your cluster crashes, basically, if those queries are too big. Um, and those problems were gone, basically. And uh, another good, good uh, outcome is that the algorithm is somewhat generic. So there's no logic in, let's see how big is this query, then do that. It basically, it is always enabled. So it basically, the sample size determines in how much buckets you look. Um, if it's a small query, the FQ parameter just says, okay, look into everything. It's okay. If it's a big query, you look into a small portion, which is also fine. So there's no, no branching in, in this code. And this is great. And in the end, everything was uh, cheaper then. So, which is also great. And all are happy. So, questions? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That was very interesting. Um, how complex are the queries that you're expecting, that you're, you're, you're retrieving here? The, the, sorry, the, the queries that are being input into the system. Are they, do they tend to be simple term queries or, or do they end up being quite complex? We, okay, we get, we get very simple term queries like sale or genes, but then quirky comes in place and it just blows up. Sure. So, yeah, I was wondering if you had looked at... So, Lucene has a account API... Um, which I don't know if you've if you've looked into at all. So they're, they're, it can use term statistics to give you a, 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 a count of, of the number of documents that are going to come back from a particular query without having to execute the query itself. Okay. For certain simple types of queries, I was just wondering if that was something that you investigated. Yeah, the problem is that's a huge query tree. So, not sure, but we'll check it out. Cool. Any other question? Yeah, I dare to ask one. Um, I hear there's a team at the company you work for uh, which is looking into zero hit queries. Can you predict uh, if there's a zero hit? You know, can you predict zero results as well? Because obviously it seems a bit of an edge case. We yes, we um, we had we built a component using those components that were basically 100% sure that we have zero query, uh, zero hits. But um, everything beyond is just a wild guess. Okay. Sounds nice. Yeah. Mm, Let's may. cooperate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, okay. We have one here. So you, you solved a relatively common problem, I think, in for larger shops at least? Have you looked into any kind of what, what others are doing or what kind of alternative approaches are out there? If any other stories to? We followed along what, what the others are doing, but um, we did not find any really matching solution because in our case, the first phase ranking is really huge. Second phase ranking is outside. And um, the problem, the very specific problem is that the first phase ranking in conjunction with the Solar Collapse plugin running over 20 million documents is just a heap eating monster, heap and time eating monster. So we needed to somehow just limit the number of documents before we get into the ranking phase. Okay, so, so it's also very specific to the Collapse plugin, you're saying? No, not the approach not. Our problem was that that just added on top to everything. Even without the um, collapse plugin, uh, we saw a very huge um, speed gain and less resources used. I think m maybe um, what you are up to is why do not use sort by and you just use the index value you sort by and then limit. Um, this could be an approach, but um, then you would lose the ability to use your re-ranker or your ranking inside of Solar. And that's a problem because you have your precious ranking function, um, which all 
those factors and basically you, lo you will you lose this. So um, that's a problem in addition to the collapsing problem. Okay, with a bit of delay we got uh, a question from the online viewers. Did you consider an alternative approach with identifies queries with large result set and just handles them differently than queries with the management number of results? So they say, can you recognize the queries if they have a big result set in advance and then handle yeah. them differently? Like okay. This is hmm, the more, the caching solution, I would say. Or, um, yeah, kind of recognize those those queries. Yeah, the problem is those queries in general um, tend to be not the same every time. So they vary by small parts. Like they are, um, they have ores in it, like bags or shoes, or you, you can you can build huge sets in millions of ways. Basically, that's the problem. And what you get along with it, uh, those are uncacheable parameters, which basically are cache busters. Like, are you in an experiment? Are you this? Are you a locked in user? Is there. A so basically, everything busts your cache quite frequently. So. And we explicitly wanted a solution that is generic to any query that enters the, the, the solar cluster. Any other question from the room? Oh, yes. um, for the estimation of the hit count, um, how do you make sure that the bucket from which you sample uh, has the same distribution of products than the overall uh, solar index? So, for example, if all brands of a certain uh, yeah, if all products of a certain brands were indexed at the same time, maybe they are all on on another part of the index. We, we choose those, those numbers randomly and we recreate the index, um, let's say, every half an hour, every half an hour, every couple of hours, so they get assigned a random number again. Um, this number is not truly random because in an e-commerce, e you, you want a kind of stability, let's say. Let's say like this. Um, you don't want to search for shoes and get a different result every time you hit, you hit enter. So you do not want to have for the same product a different number every time. So maybe there's a, um, there are conditions about the random number, which you must choose very carefully, but um, yeah, to get not this, this problem that you mentioned, yes. Um, but there are conditions, of course which is for us basically the collection name. So inside one collection, a specific product should get the same number every time, for example. So, um, but then the shard um, random number select, or the shard selector for each document and the random number in combination ensures that those are evenly distributed. Another online question, how do you determine the appropriate bucket size for a given data set? Yeah. We just, we just knew that um, we wanted to have about 100k documents in the bucket because that's the, that was roughly the sweet spot where we knew um, that the selects were coming, um, were returning pretty fast. We knew the we know the the overall document size, and so we just did, did the math. As we re-index the collections every half an hour, we can adjust the bucket size if the um, number of documents grow. That's but pretty easy, and it's not that important. Yeah. To, to I think the bucket size is not that important. It could be 100, it could be 90, it could be 120. So you can. Um, Define your bucket size and let your index grow like 10%, 20%, 30%. I think it's not an issue. Um, and then readjust. So, yeah. I mean, the, the, the main goal is to cut off those 
long run queries. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if those uh, are 400 milliseconds or 450. So it doesn't matter that much, I would say. Yeah, we probably basically we compute the, the sample size and then um, from the sample size we know with the bucket sizes, we know how many buckets to select. We could easily use a thousand buckets and just select more or include more buckets in the, in the sample size. Okay, no further question from the online community? No question here? Thank you. Perfect, thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you.